Welcome back to the ultimate system design course. In today's video, we're discussing how system design rounds are structured. I'm Akhil, founder at Armor AI, which is a Techstars and Outlier Ventures backed company. Earlier on in my career, I have conducted hundreds of system design interviews as a panelist. And I'd like to give you some seriously helpful and valuable tips that will be effective in performing better at system design interviews. First, let's understand what the interviewer is testing you for. They're essentially assessing your ability to design scalable, efficient, and robust systems. Another thing that they're looking for is simplicity. Now, simplicity is a word that gets taken out of context more often than not. So it's important to understand what it really means. Simplicity doesn't mean a small system. It means the system is large or complex, but it works in a simple way. Very often, what ends up happening is that due to the misinterpretation of the word simplicity, many engineers end up designing systems that are too basic. And their planning and technical understanding and skills don't come through. Since you're essentially rewarded on your ability to think of possible problems related to scaling the systems, so the more comprehensive and efficient systems you can design, the better it is. So basic systems won't work. However, different components and modules cannot be slapped onto the architecture just for the sake of it. And that's what's really meant by simplicity. Actually, a system could look like this and still be extremely simple, while another system could look like this and still be extremely complicated to understand. A system that looks like this may not get rewarded because it would appear that you have not thought about the problem in depth and laid out all the details. Another term that's often confused is complex. Well, complex is not the same as complicated. A complex system could still be simple, but a complicated system is never simple. It's simply inefficient and unstable. And that's what we really ought to avoid in system design. Now that we know what the interviewer is testing for, and we've understood and clarified some of the most confused terms, it's time to start talking about how a system design round is structured. The usual system design round lasts for about 45 minutes, but this duration usually changes depending on the seniority of the position that you're applying for. If you're a young engineer, you might just have a 15 minutes system design round. Whereas if you're applying for a CTO position, you might have a two hour system design round. But just for the sake of this video, let's only consider the 45 minute standard system design round and let's break it down because the same concepts would apply to smaller or longer system design interviews. The first two to three minutes are generally for quick introductions, but that's still a lot of time. Now to excel at the interview, you need to leave the last 10 minutes for Q&A. That means you're just left with 25 minutes to design the system and also explain it to the interviewer. Ideally, you want to divide those 25 minutes into five parts of five minutes each. And those parts are exploration, identification, selection, execution, and explanation. The exploration stage is all about understanding the problem and creating quick sketches and notes. The best way to go about this is if you can start this phase in the first 10 minutes itself. And that means you can start taking notes and drawing sketches when the interviewer is explaining the problem statement to you in those first 10 minutes. But even if you were not able to do that, you'll still get the first five minutes of the 25 minute window that we're discussing, which is the first five minutes for exploration. So what you need to be doing in the exploration stage essentially is drawing a very rough diagram of how the system is going to operate and also writing down the domain specific characterizations. Now this latter part is something that we'll not discuss now since it's an intermediate level topic and we'll discuss it in one of the later videos. But in essence, all you need to know is that in those 25 minutes that you have for system designing, the first five minutes, you're designing a very basic sketch, which is like a 10,000 feet perspective of how the system would work. This is also the stage where you might want to create a quick user flow of how the user is going to flow through the entire system. The next stage is identification. This is where you start listing down all the services that are required to run the system and all the different modules that will be a part of the system. For example, if we design the system for a social media platform, we'll have modules like friend recommendation, content recommendation, authentication, authorization, and so on. At this stage, you might also list down a list of the issues or bottlenecks that can happen in the system. For example, if it's a social media platform, the feed generation could be a bottleneck. If it's a CRM, 
then uploading CSVs, generating PDFs, or file management could be a bottleneck. So by this stage, you would have identified the various bottlenecks and challenges that would come in the way of scaling the system. The next stage is selection. This is where you would make a list of the technologies you would require to ensure the smooth functioning of the system. For example, you might list down load balancers, proxy servers, caches, and message queues. And after this stage, it's execution. And execution is where you quickly design out the system by including all of the details that you've planned out in the previous stages. And finally, it's explanation, where you take five minutes and take the interviewer through the system that you've designed. And as we have already discussed, the last 10 minutes of the round will be reserved for Q&A, where you'll be asked questions based on your architecture. Now, you never want to skip this part, so make sure you're done with your system design early on and you have time left for this. In the last two minutes or so, the interviewer would ask you if you have any questions for them. And usually, you would want to know the next steps after this interview, or you'd ask them for some feedback. And both of these points, and the last two minutes or so, the interviewer would ask you if you have any questions for them. And at this stage, you might want to know what are the next steps after this interview, or you might ask them for some feedback. And both of these are very valid questions. And also about moving forward in this process. Now I have four tips that will help you excel in these system design interviews. Now the first one, it's clarify. In the first 10 minutes of the interview, when the interviewer is explaining the problem statement to you, make sure you ask them questions and ask them for clarifications in all areas where there's any ambiguity or confusion. This shows that you have attention to detail and you like to get the requirements right before starting, which is a great quality in any engineer. And of course, you don't want to end up designing the wrong thing. And that's why having clarity is of essence. The second one is don't assume. Don't make any assumptions about the problem statement. And this harks back to the first point, which is clarify everything and don't assume. Now, this is very different from the assumptions you would make for your solutions. That's something else, and that's understandable. You may assume things like the number of daily users you're expecting the product to have, or the number of monthly downloads, and so on. But whatever you assume, even in the solution, it may be wise to communicate this to the interviewer so that you're on the same page. And this brings us to the next point, which is communicate. With system design, the interviewer is not just checking for your technical skills, but also how you communicate that solution. Now for technical roles, nobody's expecting you to be a conversationalist or a public speaker, but you need to have enough communication skills to be able to explain your vision to other people and also to be able to work with other people. And if you're applying for more senior positions, then great communication skills might be expected from you, since you would have to manage multiple stakeholders and sell your vision to different teams and rally them for a single goal or objective. So work on your communication skills and communicate with your interviewer throughout the interview round. Ask them for clarifications, inform them about the assumptions that you've made, explain them the system design and the reasoning for the same, at the same time, answer questions effectively. And that's the next point, answering questions effectively. Now that's another skill that you need. So this is essentially a part of good communication skills, but this definitely requires practice. You need to be great at listening and you need to be comfortable with pausing and formulating a structured answer in your head before you answer. Being focused on the question so that you don't break your flow, which may often happen in a stressful environment, like a system design interview. Also keeping the answers clear by avoiding unnecessary jargon or overly technical terms. Now these were the four tips that I had for you and I'm sure you're learning a lot in these videos. And that's because I'm pouring all of my experience in these videos. So don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. So just to summarize, in this video, we learned how a system design interview round is structured. And we also learned an effective way to navigate the round. In the next video, we learn how to prepare for success in a system design interview. So see you.